Okay, we're gonna work with some vector, uh, 3D vectors. And the problem says that we have a boom, which is from O to A, and it carries a load P right here, and is supported by two cables, as it shows right here, from A to C and from A to B. Uh, no, we know that the tension in cable AB right here is 183 pounds. We also know that the resultant of these three forces will be along uh, OA, right here, along the this boom. And they want us to determine the tension in cable AC on this other side, right here. Alright, let's get to it. Actually, one more note, uh, the next problem asks us to find uh, the value of P, and uh, we're gonna find that in this video as well. So, from uh, the diagram that we are given, we're gonna go ahead and find the coordinates of point A, B and C. Coordinate of O, we know it's 0, 0, 0. And then we're gonna calculate, or actually just read it off of the graph, uh, point A is 4800, B is 0, 29, 24, uh, C is 0, 25, and negative 36. All right, these are all given. So from here, we're going to start our work by calculating unit vectors. We're going to calculate the unit vector for uh, A, B first. We're going to find the position vector from these values, a, b, so that means we're gonna look uh, 0 minus 48, b minus a, so the x of b minus the x of a, and we're gonna do the same here, the y of b minus the y of a, the z of uh, b minus the z of a. Okay, here's our uh, position vector, then we're going to find our magnitude, square root of uh, 48 squared plus 29 squared from here, and 24 squared from here. Now we're going to get a value of 61 inches for this. Then the unit vector is equal the position vector over magnitude. Therefore, we're going to plug it in. Our position vector goes on top and divided by 61, which is our magnitude. I just pulled it out in front, 1 over 61 times the position vector. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, what we did here, but for a c. Find position vector, find the magnitude, we're going to get a 65. Unit vector is position vector over magnitude equals right here, 1 over 65 parentheses negative 48i plus 25j minus 36k. Now we have the uh, unit vectors for these two. So let's take a look at p. What do we know about p? We know it's going straight down. So we can write its position uh, unit vector. Where, how do we write the force? The magnitude times the unit vector. So the force p equals the magnitude of P times 0i, negative 1j, since it's pointing straight down, and plus 0k. There's nothing in the uh, x direction, there's nothing in the k direction, only downwards, which is negative j direction. For uh, So we can see it better, I rewrote my force AB and force AC over here, from what we calculated in these two locations and now let's take a look at what uh, are we given we know that we have a resultant so we're gonna use that and we know that it's gonna be along uh, vector OA I mean the boom OA this so how do you find the resultant the resultant is the sum of these three forces force of AC force of AB and P so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our resultant is equal to the force of AC plus force of AB, 
from here and plus the force of P. This negative comes from when we plug it in. Okay, we plugged it in. Now I'm going to multiply it into every single term, this one as well. Over here we can simplify by 3. I mean, this 183 divided by 61 equals 3. We multiply it into each term and our P. Write it out nicely, each term. And now we can uh, go ahead and collect the like terms. Uh, join I with uh, another I here. We have a J here, we have another J, and we have another J. Pull them together, and we have the K and the K. Add them together. When we're done with that, we're going to have a nice looking R. Our resultant vector will be right here. This is the portion that we got for I, this is the part we got for J, and this is the part we got for K. Now, what do we know about our R vector? We know that it is going along this line. So we can tell that it's along the x-axis. There's nothing happening in the z or in the y-axis. So therefore, when we look at our r vector, we know that something is going to happen in the i direction. Plus, nothing is happening in the j, so 0j, and nothing's happening in the k direction. So therefore we can be certain that it's going to be 0j and 0k. And these are 0 because r is along OA. Okay, so this will be very useful for us to find our uh, force AC and P. Now knowing this, we're going to come back to our resultant that we found here. Let's take a look what we can do. In this part... We have force of AC. It's good. We need it. But is it equal to... We don't know what. So we can't use this one. Now let's take this part. The J. J, we have force AC and we have P in it. We need both and we know it's equal to zero. But we have one equation and two unknowns. So we can't use this part. Let's take a look at uh, our K component. We need FAC. Very good. And it's equal to zero. One equation, one unknown. Perfect. We can find FAC. And there it is. We're going to take this, put it equal to zero. Right here. We can solve for the force of AC. And this will give us a value of 130 pounds. And also if we want, we can write our resultant. Resultant. Since these two are going to be zero, we don't write it. So it's going to be just this part, which is right here. But now we found the FAC, 130. We can go ahead and plug it in. And when you calculate this, we're going to have a nice looking uh, vector for our resultant. And now, uh, this was uh, problem 97. And 98 is directly connected to this. All it's asking for us to find P. And P we're going to find from this equation where we found our R. We're going to come back to the middle, the J part. Here, now we had two unknowns. But since we found FAC, now we have only one unknown. And that one is our P. That is perfect. So that's what gonna we're going to bring it down here. Put it equal to zero and solve plug in for FAC, solve for P, and there you go. We have 137 pounds for P.